What's up, YouTube? Go talk to you about uh, the Coast Guard Auxiliary a little bit today. Why I joined it and some more information about how you can join. So let's get into it immediately. Move. So basically, the Coast Guard, you, I already told you guys this, but the Coast Guard Auxiliary is the uh, civilian volunteer component of the Coast Guard. So we do everything except for military and law enforcement, which means the mission of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, I'm reading this off the actual website, uh, is to promote and improve recreational boating safety, to promote or to pro to provide train crews and facilities to augment the Coast Guard and enhance safety and security of our ports, waterways, and coastal regions, to support Coast Guard operational, administrative, and logistical requirements. So I'm going to go over the list of things the uh, auxiliary does in the Coast Guard. So uh, we operate in uh, safety and security patrols, search and rescue, mass casualty disasters, pollution response and uh, patrols, homeland security, recreational boating safety, which is the main, the main thing, uh, commercial fishing and vessel exams, platforms for boating parties, and recruit for all service in the Coast Guard. So that's what, that's a little bit of what the Coast Guard Auxiliary does. Uh, like I said, we do everything the Coast Guard does except for military and law enforcement. Uh, we work side by side them. I'm real good friends with a whole bunch of uh, active and reserve coast coasties. It's just a real big uh, happy team. So um, I'm gonna skip a little bit and uh, talk to you about something else. All right, before I tell you guys how to join, I'm gonna read you off of the actual website, the welcome page of the website for the Coast Guard Auxiliary. So um, I got my phone out here so you can see. But anyway, this is from the website. So it says, when you join the Coast Guard Auxiliary, you can find yourself on patrols saving lives and property, assisting in marine safety and environmental protection, radio watch standing, educating the public in boating safety, and much more. We don't just train, we train and perform. Okay, so we're going to skip this paragraph. Here's another one. Our main goal is recreational boating safety and education while acting as a force multiplier in support of Coast Guard missions, okay? So, the, overar the overarching mission of the Coast Guard Auxiliary is to contribute to the safety and security of our citizens, ports, waterways, and coastal regions. We balance our missions of recreational boating safety and Coast Guard support with marine, or with maritime homeland security and other challenges that emerge as a result of our growing understanding and changes required in the post 9-11 era. Okay, I'm gonna pause and uh, reset some stuff. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the membership eligibility. I'm still on, web on the website, by the way. So it's inverted, I think, for you guys, but I'm just gonna read it off. So this is from the uh, website. I'm gonna read it off real quick. The uh, auxiliary is an organization of uniformed volunteers. Membership is open to any citizen of the U US and uh, Territories, skip some stuff here. Um, so it's open to anyone in the U.S. who is 17 years of age or older and a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary Association, which is automatic. Once you join the Coast Guard Auxiliary, you're automatically put into the Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, Association. So here's this one. Membership is predicted on a full and successful completion of the auxiliary enrollment uh, application, including passing the new member exam and acknowledgement of the Coast Guard Auxiliary Association. So meaning when you first join, there will be a uh, exam. I might have the book, I don't think I do. I can show you guys, but when I joined, I had to take a, uh, like I read this, uh, read this book. And uh, after that, I had to take a little uh, exam, nothing much. I forgot how many questions it's got, but it's just an exam just to make sure you know what you're getting into and all that. Excuse me. I think I have it over here. I can pull it out. But once you pass that, your information gets sent off. And uh, that's our next part. Let me get this book real quick and show you guys. All right. So as you can see, all this is for Coast Guard. <laughs> so let me find this book real quick. One second. All right. And I can go over some of the uh, stuff I have here in my finders, including magazines we get yearly. So, 
Here is the auxiliary new member course. Ooh. That's it's inverted for you guys, but that's what it looks like. It's the page it is. It's not very thick. It's, it's only that thick. It's what twelve pages or so. We're gonna uh twenty pages. It's easy. So I might read a little bit of some stuff off of this uh, in packet. So we're gonna look through this real quick. <clears throat> Listed under auxiliary new member course. The study guide. So uh, it goes through what the auxiliary is. We got an introduction, the history and purpose and administration of the Coast Guard Auxiliary. We got the uh, auxiliary missions, auxiliary organizational structure. We got membership. You got regulations and policies. That's a big one. You should read that. That's got some important stuff in there. You got uh, United States Code, all that good stuff in there. You make sure you read that if you uh, go through that. Uh, Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary support and basic materials. Human resources. Membership training and qualifications. Uh, I can go over that in another video about qualifications you can get. Reimbursement. Uh, uniforms. Member rec recognition. Recon whatever. Recognition. So, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's got some questions in there for you. So when you first join the Coast Guard Auxiliary, you'll get this packet, the new member course, like I'm just reading off to you. And uh, you'll read that, and uh, you ask you some questions, you memorize them. It's nothing hard. So it's pretty easy. So once you get through there, you will have a, uh, a personal security investigation. I think that's what's initialed. Uh, it's PSI. And once that goes through, you will be put into, let me see, let me get some more information out, because I don't want to mess anything up. Okay, we're not going to go through that, because we're still talking about the eligibility. I somehow just, like, go in one direction, and then stray off into a whole other topic. So we're going to continue talking about the eligibility. So, uh, here are some uh, examples of how you uh, wouldn't be allowed to be in the auxiliary, Coast Guard auxiliary. There's about seven, uh, seven points about that so you here you cannot be in the coast guard auxiliary if you do not possess a social security number or you have any kind of criminal background uh major criminal background i believe i'm not too sure about yeah that, that felony uh misdemeanors unless you can get some kind of waiver you can't be in the, you can't uh join if you're a uh, sex offender or anything with uh, domestic violence charges, or if you're under criminal restraint, or you're serving a sentence, you're on parole, probation, so you got a civil uh, restraint, you guys know that. Uh, what else we got? Let me see. I'm trying to read off the website. This is the website, by the way. If you want to read this, just go to uscgox.org. Yes. And it's listed under eligibility. So, we pause again and reset some more things. So you also can't join if you were raised or trained in institutions having mental or correctional. If, uh, what the heck? I, that's an, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I got one second. So that's talking about some kind of mental or uh, behavioral issues. If you have any of those things, major issues like that, there might be a flag for you. But uh you can't join if you're repeated drug abuse or including marijuana or chemical substance abuse. Uh, let's skip more of that. You got drug rehabilitation. Uh, if you have a problem with being intoxicated or under the influence of alcohol or drugs at the time of application, app, applying, you will probably get booted up for that. So once you're approved for membership, the other requirements would be uh, annual dues. So every year we pay, well, I pay, I think everyone does, but it's about 50 bucks for the whole year, the annual due, okay? Uh, requirements uh, include certain missions may be required for you to purchase the appropriate uniform. Now with uniforms, I have three. I'll grab them real quick and show you. So with regarding uniforms, 
there's there's a lot of Coast Guard uniforms to wear. Uh, the three main uniforms I suggest you get is first you need the ODU uniform. The blue uniform the Coast Guard wears, you know, this blue one. You know, the sleeves, all that good stuff. I can tell you guys where to get that too, but you have to be in to get it. And with that uniform, there's your uh, your hat. Mine's a little dirty. That's with the ODU uniform. That's what we wear when we go on patrols and we're out working. Second uniform slash third, because it's mixed in there together. But uh, the second uniform I was going to tell you to get is your dress blue. Okay? Let's go back a little. This is our dress blue uniform. The suit, it's pretty nice. Mine's too small at the moment, but... <laughs> and included in that uniform, uh, there is also the tropical blue uniform, which is that blue shirt, which is under this coat. And you wear the same slacks together, so... Uh, and with this uniform, you wear... Combination cover. This beautiful, glorious hat. I just call it a hat. It's got a special name, but I don't want to say it. Mine's dirty, but that's... You know, you wear that with the dress uniform or the tropical blue uniform. So we're going to move on to continuing talking about the membership requirements. So uh, auxiliary core training or OXCT. Now that, that's a whole, that's online, I believe. And I'll pull the, uh, I'll pull up the courses for you so you know what those are. So basically, Core training or the six or seven courses that are mandatory that you have to complete, uh, which is, uh, you have to complete that. It's kind of required to uh, join the auxiliary. You take those courses. I think they got sexual harassment. Uh, there's, I'll, I'll have to pull it up and show you because I it's been two years since I've uh, clicked on that. So one second, I'll pull it up for you and tell you the uh, courses you have to complete. All right, so uh, to get to there, you guys can't do it unless you're in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. But go to National Testing Center or NTC. And uh, there's tabs here. So we're going to show you the uh, core training you have to go through, which is online. Uh, some got taken down, but you got... Uh, what's this called? Okay. Civil Rights Awareness. Ethics Training. Privacy awareness, sexual harassment provision, uh, security education and training awareness, and work workforce resilience course. I think there's more to do, but that's about five courses. Five courses there. Those are all online, and uh, once you get in, you get your uh, ID numbers. You can take care of all that. Uh, so yeah. Now we're gonna go back and talk more about the uh, requirements to join. Okay, so my website crashed and I lost the tab I was on, so we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, another thing about the Coast Guard Auxiliary is there's units in all 50 states. So so since there's, 50 un there's units in all 50 states, um, I'm, I'm obviously not in the coast. I'm in a landlocked state, but I do have the river with me. And in my area, we have, I think we have four units on our little group together um we got three in my city one in 45 minutes away uh and since we're in a landlocked state we don't have any coast or anything but we do have bodies of water so in my area we have the ohio river and you know that crazy river so there's of course gonna be coast guard activity on there and uh we do patrol the ohio river but in our other unit about 45 minutes away, it's kind of like a mountainous area, there's a, a lake, a pretty good-sized lake. And one of our units patrols the lake, since, uh, lake and is in charge of that area with boating safety and all that cool stuff. So we're going to move on some more. I'm still on the website. Uh, let me pause this again. All right, we're going to talk about benefits. This is listed, I think I got a new website. They fixed the website. Listed under Guardian Benefits. Uh, there's no money involved, so don't get too excited. But we got, you can go use the uh, Coast Guard Exchange. This is listed under Base Exchange Shopping Privileges. So you can go on military bases. So here's the definition of that. 
auxiliarist in uniform or with proper ID can purchase anything sold in the Coast Guard Exchange except for liquor and cigarettes. Y'all need them two things anyway. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. So, you can go to a uh, Coast Guard base or a Coast Guard store and buy anything. So, that's a privilege. We'll move on to uniforms. So, uh, since we're Coast Guard, we gotta wear a uniform. Uh, you can wear any of you, no, not any uniform, but there's certain, uh, regulations of what uniforms you need to wear, which ones you can wear, when to wear them, how to wear them, all that stuff. There's a whole big manual. Let me get the manual. One second. If you have any questions about anything, this is the manual. You open this thing up, all 5,006 million pages of it, thick binder, and it will tell you everything you need to, need to know. So, uh, let's not get into that right now. It's got a whole bunch of tabs in here. It's very useful. So if you have any questions and you get one of these things, crack that thing open, get the uh, chapter you need, and it will tell you everything from ways to wear your uniform and how to wear them to all that good stuff. So that's that. But uh, back to uniforms. To get uniforms, you go to the Coast Guard Exchange if you're near one, or you can do it online. And uh, use your uh, ID numbers if you ever get one. Because you have to go through the uh, minimum requirements to join. But um, with uniforms, yeah, you get to wear uniforms. There's not much listed on this tab. Um, yeah, just uniforms come from the national, or not national, the Coast Guard Exchange. So they'll give you more information about that uh, once you get your uh, numbers and ID. Uh, let's go to, ooh, tax deductions. This is all new to me. They changed our website up. All right, so uniforms, their cleaning and maintenance and reasonable out-of-pocket expenses incurred in the performance of your duties are considered contributions for tax purposes. The foregoing is not intended to be advice on deductibility. You should consult a professional tax advisor. So basically, I've never done it. I don't want to get into all of it, but uh, uniforms and uh, keeping them maintained and all that, somehow it's that tax deductible. I don't have all the information about that. I never really had to deal with it. I just paid for my uniforms. It's not bad. Okay, so moving on to insurance coverage. That's a new link. I'm, read I'm just going to read it off. because They updated their website. And I have not looked at it, so they got some new things on here. So I'm learning too. So under the tab, under benefits, uh, it says insurance coverage. So a variety, a variety of uh, insurance programs benefit the auxiliarist under uh, Coast Guard orders. This includes medical, medical, hospitalization, disability, and death benefits should, be, should an accident occur in the performance of your duty. If your boat or aircraft or other auxiliary facility is damaged or destroyed while legitimately engaged in auxiliary op operations, coverage uh, for repairs and replacement will be provided. Um, government liability coverage protects the auxiliary from third-party claims made as well as actions that occur when the auxiliary is performing authorized missions and has been properly assigned to duty. So... Basically, <clears throat> this is kind of insurance. So that's what that's saying. If you get hurt or you die or destroy something that you're using for the Coast Guard Auxiliary, like your boat or your aircraft, if you own one, then you can get reimbursed for all that and they'll pay just to get it fixed. If, it, it was, if you were doing actual Coast Guard orders and those legitimately what happened. So, not going into all that. We're going to keep going on. Let's go to uh, Coast Guard Federal Credit Union. <clears throat> the Coast Guard Credit Union provides all services of a bank, but returns profits to the members instead of stockholders. From savings and checking accounts to home equity lines of credit, the credit union has a lot to offer. I've never had to use that. I never wanted to use it. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> but there's a uh, you have access to the Coast Guard Federal Credit Union. So, we'll move on to our next tab under benefits. 
Coast Guard Mutual Assistance. Uh, I've never used that either. I did get some emails about it, but let's read it. So, Mutual Assistance provides an emergency fund that can provide fast financial relief when a member faces an unexpected or impossible financial burden that was caused that would cause personal hardship or per, yeah, personal hardship if no assistance were provided. Aux, uh, auxiliaries may apply for such a loan and are considered as sponsored members under the program. If approved, the emergency loan is interest free. So basically, if something happens, uh, we had a hurricane. Well, not my area, but there's a hurricane came through and I got a big email about using the mutual assistance and also during this Corona stuff. Um, you can apply for a loan and it's interest free. But there's probably a whole bunch of paperwork to be involved in all that and special specifications and all that. So moving on, we got the uh, we got two more tabs under benefits. So we got <clears throat> Coast Guard Work Life Programs. Auxiliaries can take advantage of certain Coast Guard Work Life Programs, such as Family Wellness, Dependent Resources, Employee Employee Assistance, and re Relocation Assistance. Again, I don't have much information about what all that means because I never had to use it or looked into it. So the last tab under benefits is fellowship. It's a big one. That's, yeah. So let's read that. Okay. So one of the auxiliaries trademarks in good old fashioned. Oh, wow. I spelled, I totally messed that up. One of the auxiliaries trademarks is good old fashioned hospitality. Friends and neighbors of, and interested members of the public are always welcome to attend one of our flotilla meetings. In addition, you will find a special camaraderie among auxiliarists that is hard to beat. Along with our missions, we find time to relax and have fun at auxiliary meetings and outings and trainings, sessions, patrols, classes, conferences, etc. You know. Uh, auxiliarists may make lasting, meaningful, meaningful friendships. I can't read today. So basically, under fellowship, you make a lot of friends and uh, become close with each other, your fellow shipmates. So that's all for benefits. A lot of people ask me about what benefits you can get for that. So that's that. So just to recap, you get base exchange shopping, uh, uniforms, tax deductions, insurance coverage, Coast Guard Federal Credit Union, Coast Guard Mutual Assistance, uh, Coast Guard Work Life Program, and Fellowship. So, uh, let's go out to the menu and go to our tab. And it is not there. This website is not working properly. <laughs> so, let's go to Awards and Recognition. Because we do get some awards. Let me show you. Oh, wrong uniform. <laughs> Under Awards, I didn't really technically do anything to earn this award but this here my only award I have in my uniform so uh, that was awarded to the whole auxiliary for uh, serving during a certain time I have to get the information about that I read that actually what that ribbon is so one second while I pull the information up of what this ribbon is and tell you guys exactly what it is okay so from the website that award, this one right here, my only award, like I said, is the Coast Guard Unit Accommodation Award. And let me read the definition exactly the way it is. So, Coast Guard Unit Accommodation, oh my gosh, that's a lot. So we're just going to uh, cut it to the chase. One second. Okay, so, to be eligible for this award, an auxiliarist must have particip participated directly in at least 50% of the action in a single operational incident for which the Coast Guard unit involved received a citation for one of these awards. So, let's not get into all that. But yeah, you can get awards in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Here is a uh, list of them. So yeah, you get a whole bunch of awards you can get. <clears throat> now, they're not easy to get. They do take some work. You got to put some work in. One of them takes five years to get. 
um, got me in for five years, and you get that award for being sustained, I think sustained service award, whatever it's called, it's for uh, being in for five years. You got one for recruiting. What else we got here? You got Guardian Medal, Auxiliary Plaque of Merit, Meritus uh, Service of Medal, Operational Merit, Accommodation Medal, Transportation 9-11 Medal. That's not even... That's old. Chief, Achievement Medal, Sustained Service Award, uh, Coast Guard Presidential Unit Citation. There's a whole bunch of medals you can earn. And they each have their own requirements. So if you want to know what medals you can earn, go to uscgaux.org under the award tab. So, um, yes, that's what that is. And here's the award that I think is the greatest. I'm working on getting this. Is this one right here. You see it? That, well, that's like the biggest award you can get. Well, maybe it's not. It's just... A really award to be a proud of. So, uh, it's called the op Ox Operational Device, and that consists of taking seven courses. Um, I'm currently working on getting that. It's called the uh, PhD of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, so it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal when you get that. It's uh, it's a challenge to get. I ain't gonna lie, it's a challenge. So, I can get into all that. The courses you have to take to get that. But it does take some it does take some hard work and it does take time to get. But once you get it and people see that, then they know you went through all that and that you earned that and then you know your stuff. So if you do join the Coast Guard Auxiliary, you may, you wanna make sure you get this uh you wanna get make sure you get that award. That's a that's a real big one here. So uh let's get out of the uh, awards tab. And moving on to <clears throat> it's, well, website's messing up. Anyway, let's just stop there. Um, I'll just go into some material I have to show you guys. Uh, once... Oh, crap. What happened? Hold on one second. All right, something was sneaking up on me. So, I'm just going to go over some stuff that I have and talk to you a little bit about what I do in Coast Guard and all that cool stuff. So, you saw my uniforms. Uh, once you join Coast Guard Auxiliary, you're eligible to uh, receive these magazines. It's called the Navig... Well, no pretty good magazines they come quarterly so you get four a year i believe no no forget that they come quarterly so and they're free you don't have to pay for them as you can tell and it's just full of all kinds of cool information it's all inverted i know i'm sorry i think it's inverted it's a pretty good read Some pretty cool information that I just, same page it's a little magazine just you know i like it I've gotten three, I think. So you got that one. That's called the Navigator. And then you got this. Uh, the Coast Guard Journal of Safety and Security at Sea. That's a nice one there. And in this one. A whole bunch of. I'm having trouble flipping through this. And turning and looking at the camera. But yeah, a whole bunch of stuff to read. A whole bunch of good information. Pretty good reads. So, and it's free. It gets, yeah, it's free. Also, another thing, when you do join, you get through all the uh, uh, requirements to join, and you're uh, approved, your security investigation comes back complete, and you're all good to go, you will get your uh, certificate of membership, which is this glorious piece of work here. I got it framed and all that. Pride. You get one of those things. Oh, shoot. Knocked it over. Also, we have some material. You do, you learn, you learn a lot in the auxiliary. There's a lot to learn. Here's some boating safety information here. I took the uh, safe boating course last year. You get one of those things. A lot of you might have taken that already if you're uh, big in the outdoor water and all that. And uh, this is the book you read when you're trying to take the uh, safe boating course. It's got a whole bunch of information about it, about boat safe boating from navigational lights, as you can see, like boat lights on a boat. Uh, we got power boats, speed boats, lengths of boats, outboard, inboard, 
types of hulls, your kayaks, canoes, types of engines, uh, departure checks, talks about trailers, a whole bunch of information you need to know. Uh, right to know, towing, nighttime operation, buoys, uh, checking your boat, waves, a whole bunch of boating safety, talking about lines, anchors, it's a whole bunch of information this, uh, um, this little book. Your uh, certificate of number, all that good stuff. Life jackets, that's a real big one. Make sure you know your uh, life jacket information. A whole bunch of life jacket information, which is boating safety. Homeland security restrictions. You got fire extinguishers. You got ventilation, uh, visual distress signals. You got navigation lights again. A whole bunch of information. Um, I've read a bunch of it. I've gone through the course. You got uh, personal watercraft. You got different kinds of flags. Discharge of sewage and waste. Uh, just a whole bunch of stuff in this little book. Make sure you get one of these if you join the auxiliary, or if you're much in, if you're big into uh, boating, you make sure you want to read this or take the uh, safe boating course, which is taught through the Coast Guard auxiliary. Just uh, go on the website and uh, look it up. So, anyway, some more uh, content or stuff I have with the auxiliary. Here's our invoice for my uniforms, the new member reference guide. It's my other binder. Here's this is the new member reference guide, which is something you need to read. Not too bad, not too thick. Whole bunch of information listed in there. Uh, we got regulations and policies, qualifications, uniforms, medals, all that good stuff. So ah, I messed it up. I was gonna read something else. So I have that there if I need it. If I have a question, I can refer to that in this binder. Then I have here, I have my uh, boat crew training manual, which I am currently in the process of uh, trying to get boat crew qualified. So you can uh, get qualified in a boat, I'll go out on patrols, all that good stuff. I can make a video about that later. Just a whole bunch of stuff you can do in Coast Guard Clillery. Uh, a whole bunch of good content. Here we have a, I have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, some Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, this is a list of Great Lakes and Ohio River Division. A whole bunch of good boat stuff. We got this book about, not book, packing about tying knots. Because, uh, that's very important. Tie knots in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. If you have a boat, you need to know how to tie a knot. All that good stuff. I have that stuff with me. In case I need to refer to anything or teach somebody, I have it there if I need it. There's some more knot stuff. Some more knot, six knots to know. So let's read a little bit about that. The figure eight, two half hitches, bowline, clove hitch, anchor bend, and square knot. So this is a very important piece of uh, laminated paper. It tells you about how to do knots and all that, which ones to use, all that good stuff. Navigational aids. So, you guys know about navigational aids? Okay. Talking about buoys and lights, all that good stuff. And, uh, this is for your kayaks or canoes. Uh, if it's lost, that's how you find it. It's a sticker about how to find it if you've lost, if the kayak's lost. Make sure you have one of those if you join. Discharge of oil uh, prohibited sticker. I got this when I was in the safe boating class. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Cool stuff to know. If you're all, if you like, uh, if you like nautical stuff, then uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary is for you. Because you will learn a whole bunch of uh, boat stuff. You got talking about the locks. If you're near a uh, river or anything, you got the, uh, this is more for me in my area. Ohio River map, all that. Uh, what else we got here? We got the, uh, a boater's guide, the federal regular, uh, a boater's guide, the federal requirements for recreational boats. 
little packet there. And here, it talks about, <clears throat> talking about anchoring, um, over overloading, pollution requirement, pollution, re I can't talk today, I'm, this is a long video. Pollution re regulations, uh, back flame control, a whole bunch of good stuff. So, uh, registration, all that stuff. Uh, Coast Guard AIDS navigation system. A little packet there about AIDS navigation and buoys and lights and all that. That's what it looks like. Cool stuff. It's all inverted, I know. I'm sorry. But, uh, intercoastal waterways. Uniform state waterway marking system. AIDS navigation light. All good stuff. So, in conclusion, this video is really long. Almost 40 minutes long. But... The Coast Guard Auxiliary has a whole bunch to offer. Um, you don't have to be active duty or reserve to join the Coast Guard. And if you have a uh, something that won't allow you to go active duty or reserve, but you still want to serve in the Coast Guard or you want to learn a whole bunch about boating stuff, I rec uh, recommend joining the Coast Guard Auxiliary because it's hope it's full of boating information. Uh, you serve your country. You get a whole bunch of stuff to read and test and all that good stuff. So, um, with that being said about being a whole bunch of Coast Guard, uh, Coast Guard information being taught, boating information, boating safety, um, I can make more videos about this stuff. Probably endless, actually. I mean, I can go on and on about this stuff. I can give you a talk, I can give a topic and just go into it and make series and all that stuff. So, I'm sorry the video is so long, but this is just an overview about a little bit of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, what it does, how it operates, what you can do, stuff you get to see. Uh, it's just, a, it's great. I love it. It's, I've been in for two years. It's just amazing. So I love the part of wearing the uniform, the part of knowing that I'm serving my country, saving lives. Um, one thing I got to tell you guys, it's, it's not paid. It's volunteer, okay? So you don't make any money. You're not getting paid. But I don't do it for the money. I never wanted to do it for the money. Uh, I do it to serve and help people. And uh, if that's what you want to do, I uh, recommend you join the Coast Guard Auxiliary. So, thank you guys for watching my extremely long video. Sorry it's so long, but there's a whole bunch of information about the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Coast Guard. There's just so much I can tell you about. So, this is like a little overview. Bits and pieces about the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And if you want to join... Go to uh, the Coast Guard Auxiliary webpage, which I believe is uscg.org. Oh, no, no. uscgox.org. Or go to the main Coast Guard website. Go to Join. And under Join, there will be tabs about how to join the active duty, reserve, auxiliary, or civilian jobs. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, look, look out for my new videos about the Coast Guard. They're coming. I'm making more content. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell people about this video because on YouTube, there's no auxiliary uh, auxiliary videos out there. They're up to date. They're all like six, eight, and ten years old, and they're just old. And no one's really making any auxiliary videos. Um, so I might be the only one doing it. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.